The following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. Hello, everyone. This is Rob Denninger with Comfortably Zoned Radio Network, and I'm here with Jack DeGraw, and we're going to talk Yankees baseball and get into a bunch of other topics. How are you doing, Jack? Good. How are you, Robert? Uh, not too bad. A lot of news going on uh past couple weeks. Yeah, you you want to get into the, you know, the Astros? Yeah, um every day you, you hear something new and um if if what what we're hearing is true, I mean, they they were uh, they cheated all of 2017. Yeah, I mean, uh, and you know, you look at their home record you know, during the playoffs, they were eight and one at, uh, you know, uh, in Houston. And what were you telling me? Uh, some of the stats from that whole season. Yeah, and in 2017, the Astros had the highest batting average against all speed pitches, and the highest on base plus slugging percentage. And there was one other category that they led the majors in as far as all speed pitches. So I mean, and and they led the majors by a lot it wasn't a small margin they were well ahead of everyone as far as batting average and OPS is concerned well it's going to be interesting what uh you know major league baseball does and what were you telling me Robert about uh you know some of the ex players yeah um major league baseball some of the officials have reached out to former players who are retired now and they refuse to to even cooperate well, uh, you know, another thing, I mean, the Astros have been very quiet, you know, like the last, you know, week or two. They haven't really, uh, you know, tweeted anything or had, you know, anything uh, talked about anything. So th- there's obviously a lot of stuff going on. And one of the things I heard, you know, the commissioner's office, they want to wrap everything up before spring training. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, and uh, MLB, that they've requested – to search the phones of certain members of the Astros front office. So they're waiting waiting for an answer on that, but they want to search the phones of some of the front, front, front office members. Well, there's a lot of things that could happen. I mean, you, you, they might uh, force the owner, you know, to sell the team. And, uh, you know, maybe Hinch or, and Cora, you know, who was Joey Cora and A.J. Hinch, the manager and the bench coach, you know, you might see them suspended for a year, and you might see some of the players on that team get suspended. Yeah, you know, if, go ahead, Rob. If they if they do find that there is a, you know substantial evidence for cheating, then they really do got to come down hard on the Astros. I mean, they they got to put an end to this kind of cheating right away. Yeah, and I mean, you got you got to find a way to punish them. You know, like right now. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things they can do. I mean, they can take away draft picks. They can take away uh, free agency. They can't participate in free agency. They should do both of that. And I think, you know, anybody who was on that team in 2017 when they won the series, they should face, uh, you know, suspensions. Yeah. You know, this season. ESPN ESPN reported that uh, Major League Baseball is going to offer – leniency to anyone on the team who will come forward and answer the questions truth truthfully so you might see a a couple you know a player or two maybe come forward yeah i mean i haven't went over the roster and seen you know uh you know any of the ex-players i know one of the names been mentioned is uh carlos beltran you know he's the the met manager i mean this happened when he was a player in his final season so uh I don't, I don't know, you know, what exactly they're going to do, but uh, hopefully, they, you know, if they find out what they did was was cheat, you know, they they come down on them pretty heavy because this is a this is probably the worst scandal since uh, 1919 when the Black Sox. Yeah, and um, I think it was yeah in 2018 the Astros had two of their baseball operation employees sitting in the um, camera well with cell phone cameras pointed towards the dugout and home plate. And they were caught doing that in two different playoff series that year in 2018. 
So not only are they looking into what they did in 2017, but also 2018 and this this past season. Yeah, I'm sure it's been going on for a while. I mean, I, I seen an interview with uh, John Farrell, who was the Red Sox manager in 2017, and they played the Astros in the first round. And the yeah. first two games in uh, Houston, you know, Chris Sale was one of the Red Sox pitchers, but he said uh, he didn't mention any names. But he said my pitchers were coming back, and he says any I throw a great off speed pitch, and they're on. They're they like they know what's coming. They're on it. They know it. it you know and. Uh, so it it it's definitely uh, when you know what pitch is coming. I mean, it's a fantastic advantage. Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially if you could sit on a breaking ball. Yeah, I mean, if you know what's coming, I mean, your your uh, your average will go up 150 points at least and st- stuff. So uh, I don't know. It's uh, you know it, it's been kind of quiet the last couple of days because. Uh, you know, they're, they're, I hope they really crack down on them because I mean, uh, you know, look, look at look look the the, the Yankee series. The first two games yeah. were two to one. Now, say those runs were scored and they knew the a breaking ball was happening or something like that, and uh, you know, even the World Series. I mean, uh, you know, the, the the Astros scored a lot of runs at home, even when they played the Yankees. I mean, they, they scored more runs at home than they did on the three games in New York. And three games in New York, they uh, they got beat pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, sometimes when uh, I get another call on the other line, my phone cuts out. But you No, know. you're loud and clear, Robert. I hear you perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, good. But, yeah, um, uh, the, like uh, the Red Sox in 2017 were disciplined for using their Apple Watches to relay signs. And so I'm wondering what kind of technology the Astros might be using. They, their um, rumors are of using something called buzzing with a Band-Aid with the wearable stickers that you know they can buzz you with and also rumors of wearing earpieces. Well, I, I know what the Astros also got in trouble. They were they went into the Cardinal database, one of their uh, employees, and he actually uh, got thrown in jail. Sure. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of lot of lot of dirty stuff was going on in Houston, and I mean, it definitely taints uh, yeah. the World Series title. I'm yeah, not saying he should be stripped of it, but it taints it. Yeah, and I know the the first player to come forward was an ex pitcher named Mike Fires, I think yeah, his name is. Yeah, but, yeah. And there was an, another player that came forward too, but I, I forget his name off. I don't have his name in front of me at the moment. Well, I mean, another thing, if you look at a lot of videos from that season, you can get them on YouTube. And I, I think you know you posted one uh, earlier in the week, and you know I threw it on my page too that you can clearly hear, you know, the bat banging in the dugout. And, I mean, yeah. it happens right away. As soon as the pitcher, you know, the catcher puts his fingers down, two fingers down, you know, and off speed, you can hear the bang. It's like it happens right away. Yeah, and in that video, was, uh, they were playing the White Sox, and you could see it when, the, when they called for a breaking ball, you heard the two bangs loud and clear, and the pitcher stepped off the mound and called the catcher up. I mean – they knew right away that they were stealing signs. And it's like any game you get that year, you just listen late in the game, you know, like sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth inning, you can clearly hear the banging. And I know the Yankees even this year were saying, you know, there was a lot of whistling in the dugout. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, uh, it, it, it makes you think it's been going on for years. Yeah. I mean – the Major League Baseball is, is definitely going to have to come down hard on them. They they got to set it set an example for the rest of the teams. Well, I, I know they were warned a couple years ago, like you mentioned the Red Sox, and I think the Astros might have been involved in something like that too. And Manford's the commissioner. He said, you know, uh, I'm, we're really going to crack down if anything like this happens again because you know you've been warned. So, you know, it's. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next uh, few months. Yeah. And um, the Yankees made some uh, news 
past couple of days by releasing uh, Jacoby Ellsbury and, and Greg Bird. Well, I, I think uh, you know, you know, Greg Bird. I don't know if he'll be with the Yankees, but I, I'm sure he'll find a job somewhere in baseball. I mean, I feel sorry for the guys. You know, Ellsbury don't want to be hurt. Bird don't want to be hurt. So hopefully, you know, uh, you know, Bird will find a place to hook on. Maybe he'll still be with the Yankees, even though it'll be tough with you know Mike Ford. Yeah. Ellsbury, I just think you know, uh, he 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 was injured. He didn't want to be injured. You know, it was a bad contract. We all know that, but. Uh, you know, there's going to be a battle. You were telling me something about the contract off air. Yeah. Um, he's owed $21 million for 2020, and he's got a $5 million buyout if the Yankees don't pick up an option for 2021. And the Yankees aren't insured for that money next season, so they're claiming that Ellsbury went to doctors outside of of the Yankee organization, and therefore they feel like they don't got to pay Ellsbury. You know, I I heard rumors of that a couple years ago. Because if you remember, Robert, a couple years ago, he didn't even come to spring training. No, yeah. He didn't show, you know, like uh, they just said, well, show up, you know, show up when you want to and stuff. So he's seen some doctors, I, I believe, out in Arizona so th- this has been brewing for a while. I- I'm sure the players' union will, uh, you know, love this. And even with the Astro players, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of, you know, a lot of lawsuits and stuff going on. So yeah, yeah, the players' union is going to fight the Yankees trying to withhold 26 million dollars from their player. I- I'm sure they'll they'll come to an agreement somewhere, you know, uh, because I think the Yankees want to save some money. Yeah. Of course, they they got like a, a money printing machine just being the Yankees, you know, because, you know, they want to go after – I hope hopefully they'll go after Cole and, uh, you know, Strasburg, and we can discuss that a little too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like to get into that. Um, but Bird, I would like to see Bird catch on with the team where mm-hmm. he's not in New York and under that spotlight because I do think he, he does have a good bat and a good eye. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, Robert, I don't think uh, he ever re- really recovered from his injuries. No. Because there was a story about Bird, the first spring training he come to, he was talking to Jeter after Jeter come back with his ankle. And he asked Jeter how he felt, and Jeter says, I feel like shit. Mm. But, but he said, you know, you don't tell the press that. So I think that stayed in Bird's mind, you know you don't mention. So I don't think he ever actually healed from his first injury. And that's why he kept on getting hurt. Yeah. I mean, he had the ankle injury and then last year he had, what do they call that? Plantar fish. Uh, yeah. That's, that's like what, that. uh, Peyton Manning had. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you know, when you have trouble with your feet, well, you, you just can't move. I mean, you, <laughs> You know, you can't that, – that, that's your base. That's where you get your power, you know, one of the plays you get your power from. So Yeah, and it, it looked like when he – you know, I think he only played 19 games last year, but when he was in there, you could tell his bat speed was a little bit – it was slower. And it, I think that's to do with, like you said, the feet. I mean, when he was at his best – you know, I remember seeing him down here with the Tampa Yankees, and even when he come up to the big club, the, the one year, you know, he was hitting the ball a lot to left field. Yeah. And when he, you know, he was struggling with the Yankees, he he was he was trying to pull everything. So it's like, uh, you know, he was just a different hitter because when he was in the minor leagues, you know, with, with Judge and Sanchez and all those guys, he looked like the best hitting prospect they had in the whole organization. Yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, Brian Cashman the other day, he does want to focus in on uh, starting pitching. And Zach Wheeler was a guy they were interested in and trying to get. But right now you got the White Sox, Angels, Padres, Twins, and Reds pursuing Zach Wheeler right now. And so I don't think the Yankees are going to be able to land him with the, with those other teams looking to try to get him. So I think, like you said, Strasburg and Cole are the two, two big fish that I think they like to reel in. Well, well one of the rumors I heard, uh, Robert, with with the Reds, 
Castillo, Louis Castillo, the pitcher. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were talking like Clint Frazier, uh, Debbie Garcia, and may, maybe Hap to go after, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Castillo. Yeah, because if they can uh, move Hap, I think they can save something like $17 million. Yeah, you know, I, I hope Robert they they go full force after Cole. Yeah, because for years I was thinking, well, you know, pitchers they're iffy. You don't give them the big contract, but I mean, the Yankees have endless money. I mean, uh, and uh, you know, I, you get tired of losing. You know, you you miss the World Series by one game. You miss the yeah. World Series by two games. I mean, it, I think you know you you go all out to get these, you know, to get Cole. Whatever you have yeah. to do, to get him. I mean, even if it doesn't pan out, at least you did the right thing. I remember when they signed CC in two thousand and nine, they got him and AJ Burnett, and they you know they won the series, and they yeah. and uh, they they were in the playoffs every year for like the next six seven years. So, if you have to overpay at the beginning. You know, it it might be worth it if it, if it wins you a series or two. Yeah, and the rumor is Cole's looking upwards of uh, two hundred and fifty million. Um, I don't know how many years he's looking for, but they think it might cost anywhere from twenty five to thirty million per year to land Cole. But I mean, if he's anything like he was last year, he, he's he's worth the money. Well, I mean, if if it wins your World Series, it, it's it's well worth it. I mean, uh, like I said before, you know, you, you 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 get tired of just being close. You at least yeah, want to get yeah. the pieces in place. I mean, that was I think the difference between the Astros and the Yankees this year. The Yankees were good enough to win, but you know, the Strohs had uh, Cole, and he come up yeah. big in the playoffs, and he won Game Three. So. And the Yankees, you know, they had to burn to that bullpen, and I think it was Teixeira who made the point that, you know, when you start seeing the same guys out of the bullpen game after game, you, you, you know, you start to figure them out, and I think that's that kind of hurt the Yankees in that series a little bit. Yeah, and you know, another thing, you can't always have your your starters go. You know, they talk about five or six innings. Well, a lot of those games, the playoffs, they were going four innings. Yeah, yeah, and look what Verlander did in that one game. He got roughed up in the, the first inning, but he wound up giving him seven strong innings, and I think uh, after the first inning he had six shutout innings, and he saved the Astros' bullpen for the next day. Yeah, so I, I think, uh, you know, maybe even Strasburg's a possibility. I mean, he's had some injury problems, but when he's been healthy, he's been a, you know, he's been a great pitcher, and he was fantastic yeah. in the playoffs this year. Yeah, and Strasburg, he he opted out of uh, his contract, which still had four years and a hundred million dollars left on it. So he walked away from twenty five million a year with the Nats. Well, hopefully they'll go they'll go after him too, because I mean, you know, the Yankees got money to burn. I, I you know I, I get tired of hearing about the salary cap. I understand it, but you know. All they have to do, the Yankees, is raise ticket prices. I mean, you, you've priced out the average fan 10 years ago. So now it's like, you know, people who spend four or $500 a ticket, if they have to spend an extra 50 100 a game, it won't make a difference to them. They, they got plenty of money. Yeah. You know, because right now I think the Yankees, they're top, you know, they're, they got Severino, Paxton, Tanaka, and – the rumors are the Yankees want to move Hap and clear that seventeen million. And have you heard anything about Dem- Domingo Herman? Well, is he going to be back in the Yankees uniform next year? Well, everybody, you know, everything's quiet. You know, when, yeah. when he like, you know, hit his girlfriend, which is you know a ter- terrible. He did it right in front of a, a, a major league baseball official. So they, they've been very yeah. quiet on him. He'll probably get suspended, you know, 50 to 80 games to start the season. So I don't think you can really even rely on him till maybe late June. Yeah. So uh, he's not even in the, you know, the equation right now. I mean, uh, yeah. just, you know, a, a stupid thing to do. 
terrible thing. Yeah, and I think one of the main reasons they uh, they released Ellsbury and Bird was so they could put Davey Garcia and Estevan Florel on the major league roster, along with a couple other players, I think. Yeah, they have uh, you know a, quite a few uh, really good pitchers in the in the minor league. So I you know we'll be seeing them in uh, you know about uh, ten or eleven weeks down here in spring training. So uh, they, they do have some arms, you know, but they're uh, you know it, it's not uh, you know it, it's pretty close. But you know you, you don't want to they're not going to throw a rookie pitcher in and expect him to you know to thrive uh-huh. in New York. And did I hear? I thought I heard that Miguel Andahar is working out at first base, or is going to work out at first base during the off season. I the only thing I've heard he's down here in Tampa now, and I and I seen where he was. You know, he was he was hitting, he was taking ground balls at third base. But you know, there there's been talk of possibly you know getting him at, at first base because you know uh, I mean he's good trade bait. But I mean, yeah. if you really want to uh, lose a good young bat like that, because he yeah. he could be a, a lead hitter for the next you know ten seasons. Yeah, I mean, even players from opposing teams, they said they would step, you know, they would get up in the dugout to watch him hit, because uh, like they said, he can. Uh, What's the word? Rake. You yeah. Know, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he yeah, he put up some impressive numbers his rookie year. I mean. That's a hell of a talent you'd like to hold on to. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they got Gio at third, who had a super year, but you know, so they got a lot of decisions to make. And I think, uh, you know, if they could get it, they could get Andujar, you know, some games at third base, some games at first base, maybe even have him, uh, you know, take some fly balls in the outfield. Yeah, and um, you know, anything to keep that bat in the lineup. Yeah, and it looks like uh, the Yankees are going to let Didi walk. Right now, the Phillies are heavily interested in uh, acquiring and signing Didi. You know, I, I thought initially, you know, there was a lot of talk of, of Didi going to the Reds. So I figured, well, maybe if it becomes a cho- choice between the Reds and the Yankees, he might stay with the Yankees or because uh, you know the, the Yankees are going to be good for years, but if the Phillies come into it, it might be smart, you know, if uh, he goes to Phillies because the Phillies could have a, you know, a, a really good team for you know the foreseeable future. So, yeah, you know, I mean, we, we might Harper. see Didi with the yeah, you might see Didi with the Phillies, you know, Girardi and stuff. So, yeah, and I think Girardi will will you know greatly improve that team. I think the Phillies will definitely be a better team next season than they were this year yeah a lot of times you know when when you go for it right away you know you you're, you still don't have all the pieces in place but i mean harper yeah. is is an outstanding player and he can get better and i think if he has guys around him who can hit it'll just make him you know instead of 100 110 rbis because he could easily knock in 130 140 uh you know runs a year because he he's, oh, yeah. he's so young and uh He's only going to get better. Yeah, you know, and Girardi, I remember that first year with the the Marlins. He did a, I think, I think he won Manager of the Year. He did a great job with them. And even though he won Manager of the Year, the Marlins fired him for some reason. Well, I think he had some problems with the GM. Oh, okay. I think, I think they they might have had a little battle in the office and, and stuff like that because the Marlins have been a disaster for a long time. And yeah. one of the reasons is they they don't have uh, you know they they didn't they don't have good ownership you know and uh, yeah you know I know Jeter's got a tough job down there and I you know I hope he turns it around yeah and did uh, Don Manningly get an extension yeah yeah he, he he's he's still going to manage the team so that's good and you know another thing Robert uh, he he's up for the Hall of Fame yeah. Yeah, I God, I'd love to see him get in. Well, I know uh, Thurman Munson; he's up there too, and uh, yeah, Thurman you know, belongs well, in there. If uh, it, right now it, it, it's like fifty-fifty, I, I think when a guy like Harold Baines gets in, uh, it yeah. open it opens the door 
up for you know a, a lot of other players. I mean, I mean, Baines was a, a terrific player. He was he's better than ninety nine point nine players who ever played in the big leagues. But I yeah. think with, with him getting in, it might open the door for you know Thurman and uh, Mattingly and Dave Parker and Alan Trammell and Evans and you know yeah, Ted Simmons. There, there, there's you know. Dave Parker. I mean, there, there's a lot of you know uh, terrific players who are just right on the you know the threshold. Yeah. The, uh, the other day, I saw Ken Griffey Jr. turn 50, and I was like, God damn, I'm getting old. <laughs> I remember when he <laughs> first came up. Yeah. No, I re- I remember when Ken Griffey, you know, senior was with the Yankees, and you yeah, know he yeah. used to bring you know he used to bring him the Yankee Stadium. And this was like, you know, 83, 84. So, I mean, uh, the years just, uh, they fly by. I mean, I could still remember Griffey rounding third, heading for home in that wall, that first wall card series. Uh, I mean, that one hurt, you know, especially with, you know, my favorite player, Donnie, being in his first playoff series. To lose like that, that was heartbreaking. Yeah, and I mean... Uh, well, Edgar Martinez was fantastic that series, and uh, oh god, yeah. And you know they had so many chances to win. I I, I know they had the bases loaded. Manley just got the big hit to put them ahead four to two, and yeah. Stanley, who hit like six grand slams that year, was up with the bases loaded, a three zero count, and he got a meatball down the middle and he fouled it off. And it's like yeah. that that was that was a rough one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I remember Edgar. I mean, you you couldn't get anything by him. I mean, I mean he could hit a take an inside pitch and he could get that bat head out and out in front real quick. Yeah, he he he's a terrific hitter. I mean, that's why he's a uh, you know he's in the Hall of Fame and he you know he deserves to be there. I mean, he was one of the best hitters ever. Yeah, you know, and you know I was I was hoping the Yankees. This, I'm hoping this off season the Yankees. Uh, give DJ LeMayo an extension. Yeah, that should be one of the top priorities because uh you know, what what a what a great year he had. I mean, and 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 he didn't even get final uh you know for the for the MVP. I mean, he wasn't even like one of the top ca- candidates and he should have been like right up there. Oh, definitely, especially I mean, for a leadoff hitter to have over 100 100 runs driven in. I mean, he was a, a one-man wrecking crew. I mean, hit for average, drove in runs. I mean, Jesus. Yeah, and all, I mean, the, the big hit he come up with in the playoffs. I mean, uh, oh yeah, that that's in the, that's incredible what he did all year. I mean, uh, you know, what a hitter he is, and hopefully he can keep it up. I'm sure he can. Yeah, and with with Didi, with you know, not coming back. Do you see them moving Torres to short and maybe putting LeMayu at second full time? Yeah, that that's a that's a good possibility because uh you know uh they they might have, they'll probably have Taylor Wade uh, or Tyler Wade to be the backup. And I and I'm sure they'll get uh you know an, another uh, shortstop somewhere in the organization who can uh, you know p- play uh, 20 or 30 games here. It could be Wade, but you know uh, Torres come up as as a shortstop, so uh, yeah, you know he, he'll also, be at home there. Yeah, and also Aaron Hicks will be out until at least August. So I mean, that pretty much you would think they would re-sign Brett Gardner to to patrol center at least. Yeah, I, I'm sure we'll see Gardner back because he had a ter- terrific year. I mean, mid-season, I was saying, well, this might be it for Gardner, and then maybe they should have Clint Frazier next year. But uh, I don't know. I, I think they uh, they might trade uh, Clint this off season. It might be doing him a favor. Yeah, I mean, they do have the Yankees do have a lot of uh, chips they could trade. I mean, I could see Cashman pulling something off to to free up some cap space and then bringing a bringing another you know, player that can help. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah that's, they, they, were, they were talking about that. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe they'll package Frazier and maybe they'll package Anduhar too. I mean, uh, I think the meetings are in, uh, you know, a couple of weeks in, in uh, California. So, uh, you know, maybe something will be brewing then. Yeah, and um, I, I heard that they, they 
Major League Baseball is considering, um, was it uh, 42 teams in the minors closing them down or shutting them down? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple down, teams down here in the Florida State League, and they're going to, you know, like almost get rid of uh, the New York Penn League, which has been around for like 115 years or so. And one of the teams they were talking about getting rid of was the, you know, the Staten Island Yankees. I couldn't believe that when I heard it, and I, I didn't hear it and get all the details. I just heard it real quick, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I mean, you know, that's going to put, uh, you know, a lot of people out of jobs, and, uh, oh, yeah. you know, that that's going to, you know, get get rid of a 1,000 players. And, and, the, and the misfortunate thing is, you know, those short season teams – People love that stuff, that stuff. I mean, you live in a small town, and you look forward to that, you know, going to games. I remember we had the Sussex County Cardinals up by us, and it was fun going up there, you know, seeing all the prospects coming up. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, cooler heads will prevail, uh, prevail and, uh, you know, that won't happen. Yeah, uh, because that stadium for the Staten Island Yankees, I mean, it's a nice little stadium. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, minor league baseball is terrific. And, uh, you know, with the cost of the major leagues and stuff, uh, you know, it's it's fun to go to those games. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, that, that that won't happen. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be, uh, that'd be a shame. It really would. And I, wa- I, I wanted to bring up uh, the Mets. What, what did you think of uh, Carlos Beltran being hired as a, as a new manager? Well, uh, you know he's well respected in baseball before the, before this come out with the Astros and stuff. So, yeah. you know, uh, he don't have any experience, but either did Boone when he come to the Yankees. So, you know. <laughs> It's really hard to say, Robert. I mean, it looks like the Mets are coming on. I mean, they had a terrific second half, this, you know, this past season. And you know, maybe if they can, if the bullpen will pick up a little, and uh, yeah. you know, they could make some things happen this year. And hopefully, Robbie Cano will have a better year. But uh, you know, it remains to be seen. You know, is he going to get suspended, Beltron? And so, uh, yeah, because who knows. His name's been- <laughs> been linked with the uh, Hinch and core like the, he was a main main player in this uh cheating scandal but but you know the thing is he was a player then you know he yeah. wasn't a coach so i mean could he face you know a suspension maybe i don't know 30 days 60 days half a season i mean i don't think they can suspend him for a whole year because he was just he would know he was just the player so you know, it's, yeah. uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, it's just always something with the Mets. <laughs> yeah. You know, but like if Major League Baseball, like they said, if, you know, if the players um, answer the question truthfully, they'll give leniency towards them. So Beltron, if, you know, if he knows something, it's probably in his best, you know, best bet just to tell tell them what, what he knows. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think they have, they have so much information now, you know, uh, you better come clean because if you don't, uh, it, it'll just uh, come back to bite you. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to touch on? You you, you don't want to mention football, Robert, or anything? Wow. Uh, Giants are 2-8 and eight and <laughs> killed my spirit this year. <laughs> Yeah, they play Chicago tomorrow. Well, well, Jones has looked pretty good, hasn't he lately? Or um, he's looked, yeah, he's 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 looked pretty good. Um, he's, I think, he still leads the NFL in total turnovers. But um, the Giants' offense last year actually played better last year than it has this year, statistically. Um, but same problems. I mean, defense they. They can't stop anyone, and on offense, they they turn the ball over a lot, and they just can't seem to run the football, even though they got Saquon Barkley. It's 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 crazy. Yeah, does he seem to still be injured, or you know, does he seem to be a hundred percent? 
Um, I, I, he looks to be a hundred percent, but um, it's it's the play calling. Uh, they they have Jones in the shotgun a lot, and when you just in the shotgun and then hand the ball off to the running back, it, it's hard for him to pick up any speed. And like last year, they had Manning under center a lot, so Barkley was about five yards behind him. So when Manning turned around to hand it off, he had a full set of full, you know full head of steam, and he was able to hit the hole quick and pick up yards. But this year, they're handing and handing the ball off to him from the shotgun, and it, uh, he's having trouble finding holes. Yeah, you got to run five or six yards before you get to the lead line of scrimmage. Yeah, you know, and you don't have that full head of steam behind you either. You know, it's like trying to, you know, from a stop to start, it's 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 pretty hard. And that's it, the one it, thing I don't think I don't think Pat Shermer is the right coach for this uh, this team. He might be a decent coordinator, but he's he, he's not a good head coach. Yeah, I was going to ask you: Is there any uh, you know are they talking about a coaching change or anything? No, I think he, he, he'll get he'll he, he'll get another year, but if. They don't improve drastically next year. I can see the Giants letting him go after next year, especially if they don't have a winning record. How many years has it been since the Giants had a winning team? Um, 2016, they went 11 and five and made the playoffs. And then 2017, the wheels came off with injuries and a lousy head coach, and then. Pat Shermer took over last year, and they went five and eleven. But uh, two bad coaches in a row. They probably should have never fired Tom Coughlin. No, he uh, he had a lot of success there. I mean, he got him in the playoffs a bunch of times, and you know the Super Bowl. And it's just uh, you know it, it yeah. just seems like it's uh, you know the the, the mid sixties, uh, the seventies with the Giants again. I mean. <laughs> Because yeah, after their last Super Bowl in 2012, that the offensive line was done. They started retiring. Um, the receivers, um, Hakeem Nix left, Mario Manningham left, Brandon Jacobs, Ahmad Bradshaw left. Uh, that Super Bowl team basically was gone. And um, Jerry Reese did a bad job filling them in or replacing them, but Tom Coughlin had the team going in the right, right direction. I mean, in and, and 2014, the offense was really good. Defense was bad. In 2015, Eli was great. The offense was great, but their defense was historically bad. It gave up the most points in Giants history, and they've been around since the 1920s. And they fired Tom Coughlin after that year. And then they went out and spent over $200 million upgrading their defense. And that really ticked off Tom Coughlin because if you were going to go out and upgrade the defense, then you should have brought Coughlin back for at least one more year to see what he can do because the offense was playing great. It was it was the defense. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, New York football, I mean, even with the Jets, it's just uh... – you know the the winter sports in 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 the New York area is pretty damn sad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, last year the Giants I think lost it was they lost eight games by seven points or less, and five of those eight games they lost by three points or less. And their defense in four games gave up the lead in the final two minutes. I mean, the Giants really could have easily gone nine and seven last year and made the playoffs but their defense just couldn't hold leads. Well, both the games aren't even close this year, are they, Robert? I mean, no, no. I mean, the game will start and right away in the first quarter, the Giants will be down 14, 17, nothing right away. And it's just, it's brutal, you know. And that's why I feel bad for Eli Manning. I mean, if you knew you were going to go to the quarterback this quick and this early, they should have just released Eli Manning instead of having him stand on the sideline the whole season because there's no reason to bench him. You know, the only, yeah. the only the only satisfaction I get is knowing that people can't blame Eli Manning for their struggles the last couple of years because it wasn't him. It was just a bad team. He's playing on he, a bad team. 
And, you know, the thing is, Robert, he could probably help out some teams in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he can still play at least one more year. You know, he's 38, but he, he keeps himself in great shape. And the quarter, um, like Kurt Warner, who studied his, his tape, said Eli Manning can still play at a high level. You know, he says, you know, he could still play. So, I mean, well, I wouldn't mind seeing him come back next year, for, you know, for one year, one more year. Is there any report? Is, is he mentioned he wants to play another season? Uh, he's been extremely quiet ever since he uh, got demoted and benched. He's You haven't heard a peep out of him. Well, he, he's always been a, a great teammate and stuff. So, yeah. uh, but hopefully, I, you know, I'd like to see him, uh, you know, get a chance with a, a, another team. You know, if, if he's still got anything left, you know, and the quarterback play in the NFL is spotty. So, uh, you know, I'm yeah, sure he can get a job somewhere else. Here's the interesting thing. I think Tom Brady is going to retire after this season. He He put his house up for sale. His trainer who lives near him put his house up for sale. Um, he's talking and acting like this is his final year. If Tom Brady retires, I could see Bill Belichick seeing if Manning would want to come and play for a year in New England. Well, that that would be interesting. <laughs> that would be interesting yeah. to see. Yeah. Because, I mean, the one thing about Belichick is he's he's a great head coach, and he puts his players in a position to win. I mean, I think if Manning's going to play next year at all, it'd be with a team like New England. Well, he can he can still throw all those short passes. I mean, that I, I think that's what the Patriots mostly do now. You know, they yeah. they they throw a lot of shorter shorter patterns, and I'm sure, uh, you know, I've never heard that rumor before. So that that's a good one, Robert. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. <laughs> And, and that, it's like last year, Eli Manning was uh, he was a top ten quarterback when it came to the deep pass. He was um, one of the highest rated quarterbacks throwing the deep ball, and he had one of the highest completion percentage of those ten quarterbacks throwing it deep. So Eli, he, he could uh, he he could throw the, the ball downfield, and he completed nearly seventy percent of his passes last year. So I mean, it wasn't like he was he fell off a cliff. He just, you know, he's been playing on a bad football team the last few years. Well, I, I believe over the years, even when the Brady's been hurt, like a lot of the quarterbacks have stepped in, you know, yeah. and they've done, a, they've done a good job. So, I mean, you know, Brady's, you know, terrific. I mean, he's one of the, the, the all time greats, but, uh, yeah. you know, with the system, uh, you know, who knows, maybe, uh, a lot of guys yeah, have been great in that system. Yeah, Brady, he missed one year. I forget what year it was, but Matt Castle filled in, and the Patriots went 11-5 and with Matt Castle. And Jimmy Garoppolo filled in, I think it was six games for, for Brady total, and was 6-0. and So Belichick has a, a great system in place, and he does a great job of making sure his players are in a position to win and succeed. He does a great job coaching. And I think uh, Belichick would love to to win a Super Bowl without Brady. Yeah, I mean he might hang around for another couple of years just to, you know, just to be yeah. able to uh, do that. Yeah, you know. So I mean, that's my only hope to see Eli Manning play next year is with a team like New England because I really do think Tom Brady is going to retire. He's forty two years old, um, and you could tell he's he's just not the same quarterback this year. What what what's their record, Robert? They have one loss, or yeah, I think they're eight and one or nine and one, something like that. Either eight and one or nine and one. I mean, even though their offense has struggled bad, their defense is the best in best in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, uh, they love their D backs. <laughs> yeah, and they got they they got uh, the best corner in, in football in Gilmore. I think his name is Stefan Gilmore, I think his name is. 
Yeah, they always seem to come up with the, you know, the great defensive backs. I mean, in, in the NFL, I mean, there's not like a lot of good secondaries because, you know, the, no. the rule changes and everything. I mean, you can't even look at these guys uh, crossways no. receivers. Yeah, you know, and the Patriots do a great job of drafting and then developing these players. And uh, they just do an incredible job. Yeah, I mean, the the interesting thing, I I believe, you know, most of the receivers they get from other teams. Yeah. And and they develop uh, defensive backs. I mean, they'll bring in 15, 18 guys in camp, you know, DBs and safeties just to – you know, uh, and get the best ones, and they'll stick them on the, you know, the, the taxi squad. And, uh, yeah. you know, he he just uh, – Belichick does a great job. And the, the thing, he was the Jets coach for one day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think Belichick's got, yeah, eight, eight rings, six as a head coach and two as a defensive coordinator with the Giants. Well, he learned from one of the best with, you know, Parcells and – yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I really thought Bel- Belichick should have been the Giants head coach after Parcells stepped away. And I think he, Lawrence Taylor even said that he was upset when he didn't become the head coach. But the Giants, for whatever reason, didn't think he was ready. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's that's like back in you know the 1950s when the, the Giants had Vince Lombardi and Tom Landry. Yeah. So, you know, Jesus Christ. Wow. So, yeah, so you and, never know. And the one thing Parcell, Parcells and Belichick were always good at that they could spot talent. And Parcells, when he took over the when he became the Patriots head coach, he 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 got them to a Super Bowl, the Patriots. And that team Belichick took over. A lot of a lot of the key players were players that Parcells had drafted. So Belichick took over a Patriots team that had a good foundation because of Bill Parcells. And I and I believe Parcells brought you know brought the guys from the Giants too as yeah, players yeah, and yeah, coaches. So uh, you know he uh, he uh, you know he brought a winning tradition and he brought a lot of uh, uh, you know ex Giant players with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everywhere he went, he won. I mean, even with the Cowboys, they they hadn't been to the playoffs since you know, the days of Aikman, and he got him to the playoffs. But Tony Romo uh, blew that playoff game for them. Didn't they have a fumbled snap? Yeah, Romo was, they were kicking, uh, I think, the field goal to to win the game, and Romo fumbled the the snap. Yeah, I I vaguely remember that. That That was a real heartbreaker. Yeah, and it turned out to be a sign of things to come. I mean, Tony Romo put up great numbers, but he choked in all the big moments. I mean, there were three seasons where if they just if they just won the last game of the season, they'd make the playoffs. And Romo would throw an interception at the end of the game that would cost them the game. And he did that three years, and he just always seemed to choke in the worst moments. Yeah, they just could never get that, uh, you know, that big play. So, <laughs> and I think Romo only made the playoffs twice in his career. So for all the great numbers he put up, he could never get into the playoffs. Yeah, that was the big knock against him, and it was, uh, you know, it was well founded. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a lot of these people don't think Eli belongs in the Hall of Fame, but Tony Romo does, and it just doesn't make any sense because Eli's got two rings, went on two great runs, and Romo couldn't even, you know, get in the playoffs. I mean, he only got in there twice, and uh, he choked both times. Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, Robert, I'm a Packer fan, and, you know, they've had Brett Favre, and Aaron Rodgers for like I don't know twenty five years, twenty seven years, and they've won two Super Bowls. Yeah, <laughs> you I, know. Um, I think the Brett Favre got he got he won one, but didn't he go to two Super Bowls with the Packers? <laughs> yeah, they they got the in against Denver. Yeah, with John Elway. That's and, right. Yeah. 
you know, they they were they were winning most of that game, but I remember the Packer defense, like they almost you know, they, they almost passed out on the field, you know. Yeah. The last I, re- drive. I remember that I remember yeah. that play by John Elway, you know, getting hit and doing the helicopter. And I remember when I saw that play I was like, Oh, there's no way Denver's losing this game. It was just one of those moments where you knew John Elway was finally gonna win that Super Bowl. Yeah, and I mean, with uh, you know, with Brett Favre, they won in uh, well, they beat uh, Parcells and the Patriots. Yeah, and that was yeah. like ninety six, ninety seven, the same year the Yankees won. And uh, I mean, they they just never could get over the hump again. I mean, you know, Favre got into the championship game a bunch bunch of times, but Dallas yeah. stood in the way because Dallas had a fantastic offensive line. That's what yeah, used to. Uh, he, Go he ahead, might Robert. Beat Brett. Eli beat Brett Favre in the NFC Championship game when it was 22 below, and they went into overtime, and the Giants won on a field goal in overtime. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah I remember. That. I think Favre threw an interception, and I think the Giant. I mean, I think the Packers, you know, almost had that game, you know, won. But yeah. uh, there's always something that happens. Yeah, and then the Giants again. Went into Green Bay and beat uh, what was it a fifteen and one Packer team led by Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, like like I say, you know they they've had these, you know these uh, all time great quarterbacks, and uh, you know you got two Super Bowls and three Super Bowl appearances, and uh, you know uh, they they just never can, can seem to get the parts together to uh, you know take take advantage of, uh, you know, those two great leaders. Yeah, and uh, I I, for, I almost forgot uh, Aaron Rodgers. He's 35 years old, going on 36, or he's 36. But he's uh, he's in his mid-30s. He's he's only got a few few elite years left in him. Yeah, I mean, he he's ha- he's still having a, an excellent year, but it, oh, yeah. there is some there there is some signs. Uh, you know, he's not the you know he's not the same as he he used to be, and uh, you know hopefully uh, you know the the defense can pick up a little there because uh, you know they're, they're a Super Bowl contender, the Packers. Yeah, they play the Forty ers this uh, I think yeah tomorrow, and that's that should be a really good game. Forty ers are I think eight and two, and I think the the Packers are eight and two as well. It should be a really good game. Yeah, that that'll be a big test coming up. Yeah, yeah, you know, and um, but yeah, Aaron Rodgers. He he had a knee pro. He had a knee injury last year. He had he broke his collarbone in two different seasons. So the injuries are starting to to pile up on him the last several years. Yeah, they, they've never quite had you know all the pieces together. No. You know, uh, they, they've never really had. Uh, you know, the, the, a system that take a, take advantage of, uh, you know, of, of uh, you know, his great talent, you know, uh, yeah. but they, they just never can seem to get it together. You know, the defense isn't good enough or they just don't have the top quality right, running yeah. backs or the receivers, yeah. but uh, they're, they're always good. You know, they're like yeah. the Yankees. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I tell you though, Aaron Rodgers, I mean, that guy can, Sling the football. I mean, uh, he could throw it a, a fifty yarder on a rope. I mean, he just he has his arm talent off, off the chains. I mean, he is a hell of a talent. Yeah, I mean, what, what's incredible? I mean, he can throw it from all different angles. Yeah, yeah. You know, he always seems to be able to square up his shoulders and stuff, and just. But I mean, he can throw across his body. He could, you know, throw sidearm, and you know, all the, it, it's just. Uh, you know, terrific to watch. And when he throws those Hail Mary passes, it's like, uh, you know, the arm strength is just incredible. Yeah, he, he threw one of those against against my Giants. The Giants played them in um, 2016 when they went to the playoffs. And Aaron Rodgers threw a Hail Mary before halftime. He was like, ah, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, he always seems to connect when he throws a Hail Mary. Yeah, he's had a couple. I know he's had he had one against the Lions a couple of years ago, and, and there's been others. Yeah. 
And uh, so when do those uh, GM meetings take place? In a couple of weeks? Yeah, I, I think they're in California. I, I believe they start like the 6th or 7th of December. Okay. So, you know, we'll, we'll hear some, uh, you know, we'll hear some rumors then. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, this Astro situation, they, I heard they want to wrap it up be, before, uh, you know, spring training starts. So, yeah. you know, we'll hear something, uh, you know, shortly. Yeah, because I, I heard uh, the commissioner on the Michael K show, and he doesn't sound too happy. So I think whatever punishment they do hand out, it's going to be uh, severe, especially if they find evidence. Yeah, and I, and I mean, I, I'm sure they want to find something that's going to, you know, to punish them this season. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, because... You know what? What they've done is, uh, you know, they've they've ruined the integrity of the game, and I mean, it, it could open up suspicions, you know, for gambling and you know stuff like that. Because, uh, you know, when you when you use technology for, uh, it's great, but when you use it for the wrong reasons, it's, uh, you know, it puts a big, uh, you know, big scar on the game. Yeah, like you said, they could, you know, not only find them heavily, but take away their draft picks and also take away their international signing money. You know, yeah, you know they won't be able to sign free agents, and you know uh, a lot of the players you know they might get thirty game suspensions, fifty game suspensions, so a lot of those guys on the you know the championship team from two thousand and seventeen could be facing the some severe uh, punishment, yeah, well, you wanna uh do this the same to our next week thursday yeah we we can we can work something out and uh you know, hopefully we'll have uh, more to talk about. You know, this Astro yeah. scandal. Uh, you know, it's, 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 things seems to be coming out every couple of days. So, uh, yeah. you know, there's always a lot to talk about, especially when you know about the Yankees, because uh, you know, with their tradition oh, yeah. and history, there's there's always something to talk about. Yeah, and well, and before you know it, pitchers and catchers will be reporting. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, February 12th. So let me see. Uh, six, yeah, it's about uh, 12 weeks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jack, yeah. so we'll play by Yeah, I mean, Robert, a friend of mine got exhibition tickets, and he sold two of them for opening day, $300 really? for two tickets. No kidding. <laughs> so the Yankees have plenty of money. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I would I would love to see him get either Cole or Strasburg. I mean, especially Garrett Cole. I mean, he was on another planet last year or this past season. Well, I think they're going to go full bore for him, and uh, I think we'll see him in pinstripes. Yeah, I mean, and Yankee fans, I mean, you think about it, we we didn't have Stanton for the whole year, Anderhar for the whole year. I mean, we we have a good team, a good lineup. I mean, if you can get an ace like Garrett Cole, oh, man. Yeah, I mean, they, they should be set for the next five or six years. I mean, uh they're solid. The Yankees got a, a terrific team. So, uh, you know, getting getting a top flight pitcher, I mean, who knows? They could win a couple championships. Yeah. All right, Jax, so we'll, we'll play it by ear. Yep, we'll see what happens in the, in the coming days. Okay, um, this is fun, Jack. Yeah, it's always a lot of fun, Robert, and, you know, hope to talk to you soon. Likewise. All you guys out there, you have a good one. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.